PK52, the Saturday morning meeting. Hey, uh, real quick, just wanted to, uh, just got off the road from New York, had a five-day deal in New York, uh, tremendous meetings on the certified side. Uh, again, getting excited about next year as the used car numbers start to rise. But I wanted to take a second and kind of step back and kind of blow a little power into some of our new release models. Uh, the 2019 Corolla. In a package, way too much, way too quick. First of all, love, love the Triple J. There's, <coughs> there's always something out there on a car that when you were a kid, you were driving down, you'd go like, hey, that's a Mustang, or hey, that's a Celica. And there was always a look about a car. Now if that car's coming up behind you with the Triple J lights and everything, that's a Corolla. So I love it when a car has something that distinguishes it from other cars. I think that's real cool. The resin hatch in the back, um, it enables us to be able to design the hatch to look really cool. It lightens the weight, and as we're going further and further into cars with better gas mileage, there has to be something engineered into the car where we can start reducing weight, and Toyota's been uh, amazing with that. The rear shock setup, again, let me, let me step back a second. I know this is just a Corolla. I, I, I got it. And I know you think I'm getting a little over the top and everything, but man, they stretched this car. This car is amazing. I mean, customers are really... They're never going to know how great a car this is. They think it's just a Corolla. We've got to pump this thing up. The rear shocks have been maximized. So the width of the rear shocks are as wide as we possibly can get it in the car, which is going to give that car a lot better stance and more stability in turns and evasive maneuvers. Uh, Pre-collision, so we go, so go 2.0 on TSSP and we jump up. So pre-collision has two extra things that you guys may not be used to. There's a low light sensitivity, so at low light, um, it can see better. Um, you know, there may be a kid running out in front of a car at night, and you can't see that kid. Um, the light sensitivity of this system acts like it's daylight. And the way I try to describe it is, is you know, the last group that comes in on a golf course in a major tournament, and it looks like on TV they're still playing in the light, but if you were actually at the golf course, it's so dark, I don't know how those guys and women finish those golf tournaments. Um, they're just great golfers, but they open up the iris of the camera. And that's what we can do now with this low light sensitivity. And it's also got cyclist um, sense, so they can pick up a, a bicycle rider in a bicycle lane. So it's just improved sensitivity. Uh, road sign assist, and I showed you guys about a year ago how they're already doing that in Europe. So it can pick up and let you know what the speed limit is or the, and, and read several different road signs. And then lane trace. I love lane trace. Now, you're driving down the lane, and we know lane assist can measure the lines, either the white line or the yellow line, and it can alert you if you cross them, and we have some that will actually move you back in the lane. Well, lane trace now will look at these lines and trace you to the middle of the line, and it's so sensitive if you're on a completely new blacktop where they haven't put the lines down, it will actually lock onto the car in front of you, and it will mirror the track of the car in front of you. So, again... These cars are getting so amazing that basically they drive themselves. You know, it's it's. I don't know how much further we're going to go before we don't even have to have a steering wheel in a car. But if you have a young child or somebody, I mean, let me let me let me back this up. My dad uh, drove probably two or three years past the his ability to drive, and it's really really hard. A lot of you are going to go through this when you take the keys away from your parent or your grandparent. Um, it's a bad, bad, bad time for everybody. I don't care where you live in this country. That's a bad day when you take their independence away. But the technology in 2012 of the Camry that I bought my dad allowed him to be safer um, driving that car because the car was so responsive and the car could do things that other cars couldn't. Now I'm thinking about it. Man, what if I could have put my dad in a 2019 Corolla? Could he have driven another year? And based upon the technology right now, I don't know. It seems like he could have. Uh, full speed dynamic laser, laser cruise control now in the car. So um, this allows this car to be able to mirror uh, traffic patterns. And, and we understand how that works. But it brings mention it to the customer. Because remember, the customer may be trading in an older model car. And all of this is brand new to them. Uh, you bump the car up to 168 horsepower. We really didn't add any weight to the car. The uh, car got a little bit bigger. Now the car's 168 horsepower. The car's fun to drive. Two things we get right now with the transmission. We have a CVT. I hate CVTs. 
Sorry, my personal opinion, don't make it yours. But I, you know, you drive a Nissan and they make a lot of noise. It's like, I think I'm gonna move. And then they go, or you're trying to pass and the engine revs up and you really don't feel the car going. And that's been my pick on a CVT. Ours have been a little bit tighter than most manufacturers, but what they've done is they've actually put a gear into first gear. So when you're taking off, it's a real drive gear, so you're bam, you're out of the box, and then the CV, the CVT kicks in, and we've made it, uh, a, you know, more close tolerances now, so it really drives like a car that everybody's used to driving, so you don't have that rev of the engine anymore. But I love that first gear change where we have a real drive gear, and it changes the whole dynamics of that car. That puts me in the mode where I would own that CVT. I mean, that's how much it changed. It completely reversed the way I felt about those. And then on the manual transmission, and I know there's less and less people that want a, a manual, but the biggest problem with a manual transmission for the years and years is it's been, the problem with the manual transmission is when you push the clutch in, you have no torque or horsepower. So you better really be able to drive or really an automatic transmission is more efficient. Well, now what they've done is they've, they've got the first gear and the lower speeds. They now have an engine rev system so that it's really almost impossible to stall the car. So somebody's never driven a manual before is going to be able to drive this car. Now, if they drive somebody else's manual that's 20 years old, they're going to stall it. But that, they, So they've taken care of that initial driver that can't drive a manual because it's almost impossible to stall. Then, um, as you're going through the gears, it has the ability to increase the speed of the engine to match the gear. So if your clutch is in, it will rev you right into that next gear, and then it's automatic rev matching on a downshift. So you push the clutch in, it'll blip up the, the tachometer and rev match. So, I mean, this is going to make you a dynamic race car driver in your Corolla. So a little bit of battery problem. To finish up, the last thing is active cornering assist. So everybody knows that when you're turning, that the inside wheels go slower than the outside wheels. Well, they've got a lateral G-sensor now built into the Corolla so that when you're turning, it assists you in turning. That's why this car turns so flat. Listen, I know I've, uh, I've kind of pushed the envelope and, and I'm over the top and fallen all in love with this Corolla and everything, but there's a couple of things that happen. There's a lot of customers out there that have Corollas that are 80, 90, 100,000 miles, 150,000 mile cars. I'm telling you guys right now, we need those cars back in our inventory for that buyer that's looking for that second car at a great value. The value that we're making or the profits that we're making on these older cars, once we run them through the shop and we get them all ready to go again, are usually bigger than the new Corollas. So this new Corolla does two things for us. It's a revolutionary car. Toyota's done a phenomenal job. I'm totally in love with this car. But I think what it does to get our Corollas back in that are right now in the garages and driveways and on the streets of America is the most important thing. Keep those Corollas away from those independent dealers and the other manufacturers out there selling our product. Bring our Toyotas back. Corolla does great things for us. Great new car. Great job, Toyota engineers. And bring our customers back. PK52, the Saturday morning meeting.